Good evening and welcome back to Drakenheim. This is the Dungeon Dudes Weekly Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition Livestream Campaign. And my name is Monty Martin, running our campaign tonight as Dungeon Master. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin, playing Sebastian Crow, the half elf shadow sorcerer. And we're joined today by our good friends Jill Denitis, playing Rudy Whitaker, the shifter elder tonight. <laughs> and Joe Gorman, playing Wrath, the Asimar Warlock. Thank you for joining us once again. If you're just tuning in for the very first time, welcome. We're the Dungeon Dudes, and Kelly and I post new videos every other Tuesday and every Thursday on our YouTube channel where we cover everything D&D, including advice for players and guides for GMs. Check us out on YouTube. Uh, you can also join us on Tuesday nights when we record the campaign live on Twitch. Uh, you can check us out from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern Time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. Do keep in mind, though, that this is going to be our last stream for a little bit as we take a break so that Joe can do all of his brand new dad things. And uh, we're very excited for that. Thank and you, we... We'll probably be back to play some D&D. We'll let you know when that's happening during the break. Mm -hmm. uh, but the Drakenheim saga will be off for, I think, about six weeks. Yeah, we'll be back May 24th. But keep in mind that you can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube. And you can also check us out as an audio-only podcast. So make sure to check us out on all your favorite platforms. And with that... Let us return to find out the fate of Drakenheim. Drakenheim is no more. The devastation which fell upon that accursed place left a kingdom in ruin. Now, horrors lurking in the haze grow ever more great and terrible. While simmering tensions between rival factions boil over into outright war, the power of monarchs, mages, and priests hangs in the balance. Six unlikely heroes join forces to confront the coming chaos. They shall decide once and for all the fate of Drakenheim. And we're back. And now we are back to the fate of Drakenheim. When last we left our heroes, they had decided to divide and conquer. Drakenforce and the Dusk Wardens have met as one group and broken off that promptly thereafter to fulfill their own tasks. Pluto, as Pluto, along with Wilhelm and Veo, are now headed as a diplomatic envoy to meet with the Illyrians and the Silver Order to possibly negotiate the terms of a peace deal to avoid war and conflict. Meanwhile, however, Wilhelm, uh, meanwhile, Sebastian, Rudy, and Wrath have teamed up to investigate this strange lead that the, that they found earlier in Castle Draken, which was a spellbook found in the bedroom of Katarina von Kessel with several teleportation circles marked amongst its pages, as well as one teleportation circle merely labeled Refuge. Our heroes have decided, knowing that the Queen of Thieves allegedly possesses the scepter of Saint Vitruvio, to follow up on this lead and see if they can find a way to get to grips with the Queen of Thieves and get the scepter of Saint Vitruvio. Well, with all that in mind, Rudy, Wrath, and Sebastian, the three of you have returned to Camp Dawn after having parted ways um, at Shepherd's Gate with the um, with your other companions. After that um, rather emotional uh, goodbye between uh, between the, the groups, where you said, where Rudy and and um, Wrath, you said farewell to Wilhelm and Sebastian, you said farewell to to Veo and Paluto, the group of you traveled the the road uh, towards Camp Dawn, um, where the 
the the hooded lanterns and the Caspian forces that are there are very much in the process of essentially moving house. Camped on many of the supplies um, that were camped on, and many of the soldiers are now getting restationed to the garrison and Shepherd's Gate, um, and other soldiers. And there's already whispers um, about the next stages of what's going to occur with with um, with several soldiers wondering if they're going to be staying posted there, or other soldiers wondering if they are going to be moving back in the into the city. Nevertheless, the defenses of Camp Dawn remain in place, and uh, the 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 soldiers wave you in and hail you as their usual processes uh, entertain. Um, currently, there the um, there is no kind of high commanding officer that is at Camp Dawn, as both Elias and uh, Veo are kind of amassing their forces uh, to make the move down uh, down south. But uh, as you come in to, to camp, um, the, the you do know that um, River and Eldrick uh, of the Amethyst Academy are often around the command tent and that they have their own kind of uh, stations where, where you can go and visit and confer with them if you if you wish um, and decide what your, what your next move is going to be. Well, friends, new friends, uh, Sebastian turns around and says, well, friends, and then remembers that he's staring at two people he hardly knows. What? Uh, right. We're, we're going to want to um, get some teleportation going on, so I think it's best if we talk to Eldrick and River. Um, I did find two scrolls of teleportation, but we don't know how many trips we're going to have to make, so I think, you know, for safety... Um, Wrath, you did okay in school. Did you ever get your rings? You hold up a gloved hand, I imagine. <laughs> <laughs> and I pull off my glove, and some of my fingers are missing. Oh. What, what happened? Portals. Rat, don't, don't scare the the boy. Just show him your rings. And I reveal my <laughs> other hand. <laughs> oh, <laughs> cool! Uh, Thanks I can for also that display. somehow do this, and I spider climb up the side of the wall. <laughs> I feel I... powerful yet also sick. Nope. <laughs> Nobody asked you if you could climb walls. You just really yeah, had to show That's me. That's why I had to show you. Because mm. no one was asking. <laughs> um, right. Well, I'm glad you have your ring, so we can probably put a spell or two in there. Uh, Rath, what experience do you have with teleporting? Um, I one time uh, stepped on a druid's head and while he was dreaming, I shot lightning through him. So I try not to do that anymore. And then another time I've teleported Rudy here uh, onto a giant tele uh, telepathic um, squid monster. And uh, she went inside its and chopped it around. And um, yeah, I've done it quite a few times. <laughs> uh, yeah, this should this should work flawlessly rudy um but never never on that higher level um teleporting like usually it's just myself bruce and one other never never uh, a group i okay. worry that i have you uh i've dabbled uh <laughs> you know uh don't worry about it we'll we'll be fine i'm sure um we are probably going to experience some uh you know i actually have no idea what we're going to experience i was going to try to sound cool there but i'll just be real with you uh we're going to go through a portal to an unknown location and um hopefully nothing bad happens and when we get there we're going to scout out the area learn what we can and hopefully come back without any incidents 
Sounds about right. About normal, right, Wrath? Yeah, um, Rudy's quite uh, capable of decapitating. Will there be anything that needs decapitating? We hope not. Not on this mission. Um, if we can, we're going to try to keep a low profile. Um, I am okay at... No, I... Uh, Rath, are you good? <laughs> I'll only try to decapitate the things that try to decapitate you, so don't worry. Yeah, I'll I, take a I'm back seat. Stick, I'll, I'll stick near you, Rudy. All right, just... I'm there for safety to make sure y'all don't lose your own heads uh, and that none of this uh, Queen of Thieves magic is going to cause us any trouble when we send in the other the other group. Uh, cool. I won't lie, guys. I'm a little um trying to figure out how to... I'm used to being the uh, strategist on my party, you know? Oh, so you're the... You're like the mastermind? Usually, yes. Uh, mm. So... Being the mastermind, I usually know the ins and outs of what my party is capable of, but I have no idea what to expect from you two. Rudy, I expect that you can just go and attack the biggest, scariest thing if we need to. Wrath, um, perch somewhere high and shoot people with your bow. I become Sebastian uh, using my disguise self feature. I cause incidents, and sometimes I, uh, I'm messing. <laughs> uh, Rat, that's actually a pretty good one. Yeah, and uh, I'm kind Are of like- Are you mocking me? Go, no, I'm just uh, showing you what I can do. And then I be, Rath becomes the version you know of him. I can do that on command. Great. He's Love been a it. rat before. It's been quite frightening, but you I know what? If he if he needs to infiltrate, people. he's he's great at it. <laughs> um, splendid, wonderful. I definitely need more wine before we go on this mission. No, you should keep your head clear for the mission. Ah, uh, what's the worst that could happen? And I'm going to walk towards the uh, command tent. Okay. Um, as you. Head to, as you enter into the command tent, um, several of the hooded lantern guards outside uh, uh, wave, wave you in, um, mentioning that Lord Commander's not in, but the those mages from the academy are uh, are in their own tents. I turn around, I, I <laughs> nod at them, and turn around and walk back out back to you two, and I'm like, wrong tent. Um, ah. <laughs> Having a day today, aren't I? Is it the wine? Have you had too much? I have had none so far. Thank you for asking, Wrath. Sorry, I just wasn't sure. Well, River or Eldrick, are there tents next to each other? or? Um, River and Eldrick have, like, the academy tent, right? Okay. Uh, it Neither of them actually stay there, but they use it for private meetings. Um... You guys want to head to the academy tent? Yes, yeah, let's, I let's head over there. Must confer with my sister. Right, sister. There Weird. is the the academy tent is basically this this little purple color. Uh, it's a purple canvas with slightly uh, gilded tassels um, and um, the symbol of the Amethyst Academy on a banner posted outside. And in inside the the tent smells of. Um, potion ingredients because a small alchemist lab has been set up in the, the tent where River and Eldrick have been making potions for the Hooded Lanterns um, and providing them with any sort of magical counsel or supplies. The The inside of the tent is pretty austere, pretty, pretty organized um, for a makeshift field wizard's lab. There are several spell books and scrolls that are stacked and scattered around, um, a few trunks of supplies uh, that are used by River and Elric, and, and, and two big tables with plenty of ink wells and ink pens and everything that they need for, for conferring. And um, posted, um, the River and Eldrick are inside, and they smile warmly as, as you come in, but the two of them have their guardians posted uh, outside. Um, and as you enter the tent, um, the, the tent um, has a veal of purplish smoke 
so that even when you open the flap of the tent from the outside, you can't see inside till you pass through the smoke. Mm. Obscure. <laughs> yes, well, there's many prying eyes, says uh, says Eldrick, um, as he adjusts his glasses and, and sort of uh, scratches his beard just for a moment. River and I try to uh, not have too many meetings here. It's uh, it's best for us to work, do most of our work in the Academy Tower, but it's important that we're accessible to discuss things with you and the Lord Commander and, I guess, this new king. <laughs> Speaking of the new king, I did find a book, and uh, Bath is going to produce the spell book from Skewer. Um... Uh, a, a rat was practicing magic that seemed to be infused with delirium and attacked him. He almost mm. died. This is most unsettling. This is not the first I have heard of contaminated magic, certainly, but the fact that these ratlings are practicing it so well, in such a sophisticated manner, to be honest, is concerning to say the least well uh i also found a spell book um and i i pull i pull the spell book out from my cloak but this one isn't from a rat okay we got this from the queen of thieves bedroom in the castle river speaks up the queen of thieves bedroom you mean katarina von kessel's bedroom in castle yes. dragon Huh. Yes. Very interesting spells in here. Uh, a lot of teleportation circle codes that would probably be of interest to us. Hmm. But most importantly, and I, I, I slam the book down and open it to the pages. There's a teleportation circle here of unknown location called the Refuge. Wait, Eldrick stops you. Show me that other page. Uh, uh, I flip back to an earlier page at random. Um, he, no, the other teleportation circles. The other oh. co circle codes. Uh, yeah, there, there they are. Eldrick looks at the, the first ones, and then he looks over at River. And although the, the um, although their, their complexions, um, Kind of a, a, a long look goes on both River and Eldrick's faces. Um, and they there there's a moment of palpable silence and you, you can almost see the anxiety rising in them. River says the, these are these are the circle codes for the Academy. Uh Sebastian has a moment where he tries to remember if he was supposed to tell these two about this book uh, from Veo and Pluto, and he closes the book and takes it back, and he's like, No, no, no wait, wait. Those are the codes. I, uh, I saw those. Those are the circle codes for the Inscrutable Tower and for the Paradox Castle, the Queen of Thieves would ha has our teleportation circle codes. She could enter any Academy stronghold with those. Wasn't she an Academy member at some point? Katarina von Kessel was, yes, an Academy member, but she fled the Academy before she would have been, before she would have received this information which means that oh. she would have had to have gotten it from another Academy mage. Certainly not something that is impossible for someone of her capability, but it is very concerning because it means that she could be in, she could conceivably use these to enter some very sensitive areas of Academy, uh, Academy grounds. Well, all I'm going to say about that is if Katarina von Kessel was, can, is anything like, the Queen of Thieves has proven to be 
she has means to do things that we never expect. Her getting codes to teleportation circles mm. is kind of expected at this point. She has the ability to gain information from many, many sources. She seems to kind of have her finger in every pie, if you understand my meaning. Um, so... It is but the point is, the refuge... Mm -hmm. This unknown location, supposedly, that is unidentifiable. He has some kind of secret hideout? I mean, uh, Eldrick speaks up. I don't recognize this teleportation circle code. Every every circle has a unique set of rooms that connects them from one place, connects them to, e to each other. You invoke the runes as you draw your own teleport spell in your mind, and it locks you onto the location that, that it's built. Creating a teleportation circle is extraordinarily expensive. It's... It, it, the Academy has been working on building our network for a long time. It Working alone, it would take over a year for a single mage to create a teleportation circle, and the extraordinary quantity of materials they would require, uh, well... They would need an extra, either an extraordinary quantity of materials, or they could synthesize the materials using delirium. Again, we're talking about a person who goes by the moniker Queen of Thieves. If anybody has assets and resources in the city of Drakenheim, it's been her. Mm -hmm. It's tr That's true, that's true. So this means that she has taken those resources and built her own teleportation circle. The question is where? Well, Eldrick, that's uh, what this little ragtag team here, led by yours truly, Sebastian Crow, is going to figure out. But... River, River grunts for a moment. But why would she leave these in a book? I have all my circle codes memorized. I would agree with River. The This... This Queen of Thieves has eluded you for some reason many, many times, and you just happen upon the front door code? Happen upon it? Raph, I had to infiltrate a secret series of locks that almost poisoned me and my comrades. I had to use intelligence and wit to undo this cunning contraption and discover this hidden book. But how did you know where to find I was poking around Kat's bedroom. So it was in her bedroom? Under the bed, yeah. You don't think that that's where she would want you to find it? Why would she expect me to go to Castle Draken? You know, actually, she would expect me to do that. Okay, you're poking major holes in a plan that I've been formulating for days now, and only now are we coming to this. Um, well, Wrath, what is Wilhelm as saying about traps and such? Oh, what does yeah. he say? Rule 38. Don't. 38? Don't. 42? I don't know. You'd think I'm about springing the now. trap, knowing it's a trap, or something, something, something yeah. like that. Yeah, um, as you might know, Sebastian, there is uh, our comrade, the future king of Drakenheim. Um, he he has a list of rules, and they're more like life lessons, and they apply to many, many different uh, circumstances. And as Rudy is pointing out, this might be one of them. Hmm. And or the, going this... in, if assuming it, it's a trap. Yeah, we just it helps go in. you think that it trap. might be a trap. We just go and spring it, and we still, you know, survive. Get or what something. we need to get done. Yeah, this has been incredibly insightful. Thank you both. For here well, for. we have a lot of knowledge to share. Unfortunately, <laughs> there aren't many options for discerning exactly where this leads. Teleportation circles are on a are the the nature of the spell is that they go where they go. But it's difficult to 
determine simply from the circle code itself the location that the circle is actually built. But if we take a spell and go to this teleportation circle, if we have enough magic, the rat spell, we can get back pretty easy. Yes, conceivably you could. Um, we, the academy ourselves, we do have our teleportation circle in Emberwood Village, so you could use that as a re return point if you wanted to reliably return. Um, of course, you would need you you mentioned you would need your own long distance teleport spell, but between the two of you, I'm sure such fine young pu pupils, m one of you must know teleportation circle or the teleport spell. Um, I conferred with Bruce, and I do not. I uh, didn't pay attention in teleportation class. Um, I paid attention to the cool ones. I learned how to thunderstep. I learned how to dimension door. I even learned how to vortex warp. But uh, when it came to teleportation circle, that was a really boring day. I would agree. Sebastian was right. Those were very long classes, and they were not very fulfilling. And the, the head teacher was uh, quite... It was long and drawn on. You thought a year was long. Try listening to that. I, I kick question. Wrath, and I'm like... Rath Eldrick was the teacher of that class. Excuse me? For the for sake of reference, you may remember some of your lessons that one of the Academy's foremost assets is our use of teleportation magic. This allows us to operate across the entire continent, even the world, if if necessary. Being able to be in a, an important place, if you are seriously considering um, being amongst the leadership of the Amethyst Academy, either of you, you should master these spells for yourselves. I'm sorry, Elric. I'll, I'll work on it. Uh, and while you're at it, you might also want to learn the sending spell or something like that. It, I, I don't understand what it is sometimes, River says, with Field agents always think that the flashy things like fireballs and lightning bolts are the most powerful spells they can muster, but they don't realize the effect of being able to send a message across the world or move from one place to another in the blink of an eye. These are the things that the Academy has used to change the world, not fireballs. I'll just have you know that I can produce the best shield that anybody has ever seen. Hmm. That's got to count for something, right? Very well. Do you intend to investigate this possible and very likely trap head on? Well, yes. King uh, Willie uh, decided that we were the three that he wanted. It's Wilhelm, Sebastian. King Wilhelm decided that we were the three that he wanted for this job. Either A, because he knows that we are the three most capable candidates to decipher the secrets behind this refuge or b because we were the most problematic people to bring into a diplomatic negotiation but i'd like to believe it's a and wilhelm would not trust anyone but us two sebastian you might have been an afterthought uh rudy and i are more than capable and it's too bad wilhelm can't be here but sebastian you will do you will do finally in fact we'll probably need your expertise on the teleport thing right and the right. queen, and the queen, Wrath. Oh yes, you know about this uh, Katarina. I'm an important asset. <laughs> you are, and I pat you on the back. I did not mean any offense. It's just that Wilhelm would not send us on a wild goose chase. He trusts us and we trust him. Hmm. Well, I, Orma River, can open a teleportation circle to this location for you and you can enter through that portal once you are there though you will have to find take your own means back but if you wish we could each cast the spell into your academy rings so that you could get back uh, that would be great great that makes the most sense hmm. very well then if one thing we could do is 
once you are on the other side and you know it's safe, you should let us know immediately where you think you are once you know. Well, I got the Sen in stone still. Excellent. The I have mastered a more powerful teleportation spell, one that will uh, one that allows me to be travel anywhere. There's a little bit of unreliability to it. It does not necessarily have a unless you are teleporting to a teleportation circle. But if you are lost and do not know where you are, the, your best bet is to use a one of these the spells that will put in your ring to travel directly to the one in Emberwood Village. Because if I because if I don't know like if you end up somewhere that I have never been, even if I use my teleportation spells, there's a good chance that I could become lost. For when you teleport somewhere that you have not been before, the the erratic winds of magic can bring you anywhere. Hmm. We don't uh, get lost. So. Do yes. we have the code for Emberwood Village? Is it in the book? Um, it it is not, but Eldrick and River can provide it for, to you. Okay. Right. The and Eldrick says this is notable about these scrolls of teleport that you have here. You can use these scrolls of teleport to teleport anywhere. But if you do but unless you are teleporting to a teleportation circle, there's a chance of a mishap. Eldrick, forgive me. And and also don't try tra- teleporting into the haze. That will be very fatal. Um how many may travel with one of these scrolls or even your uh, your upgraded version the full teleport spell you get, allows you to bring eight people with you um, the the portal uh, when you cast teleportation circle the portal opens for a moment and usually in that time about six people can usually get through hmm. right is there uh, any other supplies or anything that you can provide us before we go Certainly. Do you need? Um, obviously, you've all had a long rest, um, mm-hmm. and any contaminate. And if you've needed to take a couple days off, if you want to spend any downtime to get contamination purged or anything like that, um, river the ability to climb at will. Uh, yes. I probably shouldn't be glowing like this. Yeah. <laughs> um, but if, if there's, we can provide you with some. Uh, some magic do you need any potions or scrolls certainly we can we have a few things to offer i mean Um, healing is always worthwhile yes it seems to be our uh, only missing piece all right do you find that sebastian do you have the powers of healing each of you can roll me a d4 i uh no Nice. Four. Two. Yes. Uh, otherwise, we're quite a capable Four. trio. Um, so they say, well, what? Oh, we'll empty the stockpile. Here. Here's ten potions of greater healing. Woo! That's mighty generous of you. Uh, Wrath, why don't you take four? Oh, uh, I have two already. Are you saying I might need it? <laughs> I'm not saying you might need it. I'm just saying that out of the three people going on this mission, you might need it. <laughs> <laughs> Wrath, if you don't, and, you know, I, uh, I also it, you a- can use it on me. How about that? I, I do have a Sebastian as we go into the great unknown um, I pull out my book I, I I pull out this book um, s- just just scribbles and pictures <laughs> and I start flipping through pages and I land on a page and I scratch out Rickard's name and I go write your name oh uh... use this you don't have to use blood or anything weird just write your name oh cool uh, Sebastian Crow that's me. Great. Thank you. You are now added to my uh pack, you know, my uh 
I knew that I've done a lot here in Drakenheim, but I, I, this, I, this has got to be a first for me, Wrath. I, it's nice to know, you know, that you wanted an autograph. It's, it's really humbling to. I, w- I can erase it. Don't worry. If you know, is it? Rather, I didn't know you were such a big fan. This will only be a chance to keep you alive. You look kind of, and I poke you, squishy. So it wasn't an autograph? No. I... Are you... Are you famous? I'm... I'm Smash and Crow from Drakenheim. The, uh... Retaking of the... Castle. The, uh... Battle against the... Throne room monster. The, uh... You know... Everything that's happened here in the city in the last, like, year. That's been awesome. No? Rudy, is that... I ain't ever heard of you before I met you, so... I'm sure you're very capable. I mean, I'm still very impressed with your staff. I mean, it's held together by some kind of mending spell. It, is, oh. I'm surprised it even works. It's amazing. I can't wait to see. Maybe you. just word hasn't come out, you know, to the country. Yeah, folk we, and... we've been uh, we've been all over. Most most people most people have heard of me, but it's fine. It's cool. It's great. Um, we'll work on that, you guys. I'm I'm excited for this team. I'm excited for what we're gonna do together. And I'm excited um, to see uh, you know, with all this fancy things that you've done, how you handle uh, this mission. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing it. It'll be it'll be a show, I'm sure. River Eldrick. <laughs> show. We've got this under control. Trust Very well. Me. Well then, if you are all ready to depart, I shall cast the spell for you. All right, you, here we go. Okay. Takes a minute. Eldrick invokes the magic, draw, um, focusing on the, the codes in the book bef- before him, and he takes a, his hand and almost like pinching his fingers, it's almost like he opens a zipper in reality as he draws a perfect circle um, of shimmering uh, of shimmering light um, that beyond uh, um, is the impression of a vast mountain range. I step through with Bruce in tow. I lead my arm out for Sebastian. <laughs> All right, uh, here we go. River Eldrick, I've got this, and I hop through. I'll make sure they don't get their heads chopped off. All right? All right. And then I walk right through. You step through the shimmering portal. The air around you is bitterly cold. And there is a howling of wind. You look out upon an impressive vista. You stand upon a rocky precipice where there is a circular stone dais upon where the teleportation circle has been drawn on the ground. Um, This dais is on a large rocky ledge looking out over in front of you span pretty sure looking look, looking at it this must be one of the high mountains in the south and you are looking out over the vastness of the for the, of the lands of Westamar just looking out over the the rivers um you see the rivers and the forests it might even be uh, the Octonwald Forest and and the rivers that that extend down to uh, down to Geldstad, and the mountains are, are around you loom high, but you you're just standing on this very small rocky ledge that it looks like there might have once been a staircase that led up here, but it has crumbled crumbled away, and behind you are a massive pair of stone doors um that look that the the shape of the doors are are these straight pillars that as you realize they're the the doors are shaped like the the beard of a dwarf and there's an and the the doorway itself are his teeth the door and at the top of the door is the dwarf's small little head (laughs) well that's an impressive door 
Does this Sebastian Crow recognize the location? Are you trained in history? No. We're in a dwarven mountain, it looks like. Do either of you guys recognize this place? I mean, I can generally tell that that's the, the Ockenwald Forest over there, but who knows which mountain range this is, and the mountains go all the way along the southwest of Mar. I can confidently say I've never been here. Best guess you might be, um, you you might be looking out at um. You know, the the at the the Glimmer Mountain Range. Um, um, mm -hmm. The only reason why you wouldn't guess that is because the the Drake Claw Mountains uh, look out over the Elvenmire Wetlands, um, mm -hmm. and um, you're not seeing Caspia and Illyria out here. the The landscape is too forested for that. Or the bay, right? Too. No, you, you from from where you are, you can't see the bay. Like the mountains are 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 the mountains are high, but they're not so high that you could see hundred. Like you could definitely see hundreds of miles from where you are at, but it's hundreds of miles more to the coast from where you where you guess you might be. I uh, I want to confer with Bruce for a moment. I just I just politely probe. Where do you think we are? Where is this refuge? Not it's where, familiar, but different. Bruce, uh, Bruce Purs, not where you think you are. This is all like in my head, <laughs> so I'm just talking. I'm just talking to Bruce. Well, we have to be south of Westmar. That's where the mountain ranges mostly are. The only other mountain range I know of is the north east, but uh, that doesn't make sense for what we're looking at. Um, we have um, a doorway. Do we knock? Well, knocking well, is... No. Let's, let's take a look at it first, but should we send a message to River and Eldrick before we go on? Just to give them an idea. Maybe they can send a message back and give us some info. Let them know we're safe and that we are on top of a mountain. Describe what you see. Remember the sending stone only works once per day though. Right. Do we need more information before we send? Do we, uh, do we wait for that when we have to send that help message? Well, we said we were gonna send them info about where we were. And really, I don't think we're going to get any more information to our whereabouts from inside. It's true. I got, I got room for about five more words. <laughs> what do you have uh, so far? Safe. <laughs> Glimmer mountains in front of a door shaped like a dwarf's mouth. Stairs to climb are broken. Uh, I mean, that's pretty good. Rath South says he loves you. <laughs> South, <laughs> Southwest Amar, overlooking Octonwald. Can I make out? You mentioned, can I make out like any cities that I would remotely uh, recognize? I, I, again, like you're up on, you are on a high mountain peak, and you could look yeah. out, but um, I don't know how far you can actually see from the from, from this height. Probably not. Probably from okay. not not like you could like like I think like I, I think probably more accurately, it's not that you can see for hundreds of miles, but you could probably see for like more than what you would expect like nor normally be able to see given the curvature of the earth but um it, it but it, it's it's enough that this is like your your best guess at maybe what part of the landscape but there's other places that look like this it's just that 
you know, you, you, this is your and best guess for the closest place. Can we see Drakenheim? No, no, Drakenheim would be way too far away to see. Maybe. We'll yeah, because like if Drakenheim, like even from Drakenheim, you couldn't see these mountains, like the Glimmer Mountains. Walking around this general area, obviously there's the giant dwarf head door, but is there anywhere that I can go to look out the other side of the mountain? Um, the, the door, the doorway rises up against the cliff face before, before, right. before you. So, so I, I'm, I can only see like, you know, basically you're on a little rocky balcony that is no more than 20 feet wide. Mm. Um, and, and then the stairs crumble away, at, at, um, from, from there. So like from uh, beyond the, the kind of the, the area where the dais is built, where the, there's the dais and the door that are in basically this small ledge that is about 20 maybe 30 feet tops and then from there there was the broken staircase but it's pretty much a drop from there uh guys i'm gonna try to get a better bearing of where we are and um i i open up my coat and crowley hops out into my hand and i hold up you have my a hand. crow you have a yeah I reach into my jacket and I pull out Houdini and I ask, I got an owl! Purse is purring wildly as two <laughs> birds are perched so close to him. Uh, Houdini is shaking in my hands because it's cold. <laughs> He's not meant for this climate. I mean, Crowley's literally just made out of shadow, so he doesn't really care. Um, Rudy, I... Uh, your, your, what's your owl's name? Houdini. Houdini. This is Crowley. Crowley, Houdini. Houdini, Crowley. Crowley. Uh, Crowley nods at Houdini. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> may, perhaps we can do this together. You fly one way, I'll fly the other. We try to get a bird's eye view of our surroundings. Um, we get as far as we can, turn around, come back. All Bruce right, is a bird too. And I throw Bruce up in the air <laughs> and he starts flying majestically the the, th like a, the three like familiars <laughs> take to the take to the air and begin to to fly fly off have you ever seen a bird hit a window <laughs> yes <laughs> so as they 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 as they take off into the air they don't get very far before all three of them just sunk <laughs> thunk thunk <laughs> in uh, different directions <laughs> yeah <laughs> Uh, and, and they they all fall to the, fall to the ground, quite stunned, uh, as as they kind of hit against a, a, an invisible surface. Well, that was unfortunate. Is there any paths that lead around the mountain, or is it just this cliff face? There, you could try climbing down. We have been bamboozled. Well, I mean, we don't know what that wall or whatever they hit is. Hmm. We we don't know if it's maybe protecting this place or what. I hope we didn't just set off some sort of silent alarm by flying our birds, <laughs> cat birds and birds <laughs> into this invisible wall. Uh, you know, I really thought I was onto something there. I was I was happy with that one. Hmm. Well, do we now change our message, I guess? Um All right. Well, so it's Hudidi stunned on the ground. I I mean they're they're not like stunned stunned, but they they all just flew into for all intents and purposes, they all just flew into a wall. Oh. <laughs> you okay, Bruce? I call Crowley back and yeah, yeah, same. Give him, give him pets. I just shove Houdini in my jacket. And I'm like, you'll be fine. Um, a flip. Well, I guess let's go take a look at this door. I'm gonna start walking towards the door. The scepter can't be out here. It must be inside somewhere. She would have hidden it. And I don't know if we are where we think we are. What do you mean by that? I just want to say words that sound spooky. <laughs> All right. 
<laughs> Noted. Thank you. Well, um, Wrath is the master of illusions, aren't you, Wrath? I tend to find myself in thin places. You Bruce would know if knows. there was something weird. What, is, what does that mean, thin places? Places where the boundary between our world and the others exist. We have found them. They exist in Westamar. Oh. The elves. You are half elven. Your ancestors. Yes. They they have built great places, temples to these, these thin places. And creatures are now passing through. Uh, Rudy, myself, and Wilhelm, our job was to investigate and contain these thin places, find out what was coming through them. And we have successfully fought off horrible, horrible creatures from entering, but they will continue until we fix this delirium. I do not sense this place yet is thin, but it does feel like we are seeing what she wants us to see. Hmm. Does, does he always talk like this? Rudy? Always, every okay. time. Sometimes <laughs> I talk to my cat. Sometimes he weirdly talks to his cat. Yeah. It's not weird. I've gathered that. Master of illusions, though. Let's um, let's see what you can uh, figure out about the illusions going on here. I didn't know that was that's a new title that Rudy has bestowed on me. Uh, I, I, I I I enjoy it, but I'm I'm not very. I'm okay. I'm okay. I've, I'm already episode. walking away, looking at the door. <laughs> oh no! Listen, listen I to my words. I pat on your back, and I'm just like, "It's a wrath. You deserve it." You've I start talking in your mind. Now you can't escape me. I just oh, start blabbering in your mind. The the door, um, the door is a door in the tooth of the dwarf. So basically, the the tooth of the dwarf open. It looks essentially like it, it's a very smooth seam. Perhaps that you could push or pull open. Before I do that, are there any um, any markings on the door? Any signage? Any? Um, the, there's no signage on the door beyond the, the 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 depiction of the the dwarf's beard, mouth, and teeth as the opening itself. Uh. I look along the cliff face and uh, try to determine if there's any other caves or entrances or mm. possible other ways in, windows. How do you want to look? Uh, I send Crowley out, out again. This time he doesn't fly as high. He just kind of flies back and forth across the cliff face, um, mm. eyeing it up and down. As Crowley flies out... Um along the edge of uh, edge of the cliff uh, on the precipice that you stand on even along the edge he keeps bonking into some invisible wall um and like he, he'll try to fly forward and then like bonk 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 hang in there buddy sebastian you you mentioned that you almost perished just finding this book. No, I How said that I it was I did we why? What what do you want to know? Did tell us more about this trap that was uh, devised against you. There was a series of locks hidden under the floor that I had to turn Crowley into a cockroach to see through his eyes by crawling into the little hole in the floor because several of the wrong switches activated poison needles that would have injected into me, but the one right switch opened the lock, which still triggered, I believe, a poison explosion of some sort. Luckily, my cat-like reflexes allowed me to dodge out of the way gracefully. Um, so... This no harm done. Be some insight into what we are facing here. 
I'm sure it would be more elaborate. Maybe we can find a switch or a pole that would allow I mean, us to open these doors. I mean, I tried looking, but Crowley <laughs> just keeps hitting walls. Looks uh, like we've start... run into a wall, huh? Eh? Hmm? Yeah, I won't. Uh, I don't. It's it's not a wall. It's an invisible barrier. Rudy, I say you open the door. We're just going to open the door. Rudy, before you do that, I'm going to start looking around the beard. I want to look around the edges of the beard. Mm. You feel around the, the edges of the beard. I'm looking for like a, a latch or a pole, something that might be hidden behind something. Or I'm starting to investigate all that rock yeah. face that I can get at. Um, Give me an investigation check. Ah, the old investigation check. <laughs> me, look at me with my... Stunning investigation skills. I get a six. Um, you feel around the 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 dust and the ground, um, and the only thing that you feel like feel around where where the the door meets the the door and the the kind of the the precipice of the uh, or the ledge itself that it, that it stands on, um, is. It uh, um, there there's no visible sign of like drag marks of the door opening or closing. It could go up. It could just disappear. I have no idea how to open this door. Hmm. But if it's anything like you described, Sebastian, there must be some kind of key or switch I mean, that when used improperly would attempt to murder you we haven't tried anything yet <laughs> and you're describing the similarities between a hole in a floor that I found and a dwarven face on a mountain both created by the same person I, I don't I, I, think the Queen of Thieves created this dwarven architecture. I say, looking at the giant dwarf head. But I could be wrong. Uh, she's crafty like that. Maybe it's all a ruse. I want to um, look at the path from the teleportation circle to the door and see if there's any where, any kind of direction where there might be like a path or trail where there have been like feet or something travel um yeah um give me either survival or investigation oh, uh investigation which is a plus one but i rolled a 20 so. okay Yay! um looking around um as you feel around and you look for the footprints you kind of brush your hands through the dust and as you look over and look back you would expect that when you move your hand through the dust it would m leave a trail and it does but as soon as your hand as soon as your vision moves away from where where you left the dust trail and then moves back the dust trail of your hand is gone Mm. Oh boys, it seems we got some magic at work here. Come take a look at this. And I show them on the ground. And look away from it and look back at it. I wrote my name and it's gone. <laughs> I wrote my name. Yeah, you write Wrath and and the the moment like no one's looking at it, it disappears. I um I put my goggles on and I activate the ability, the true seeing of my goggles. Mm. And I start examining the ground and around the door. Um, you turn the goggles on. You are in a dome shaped stone room. The, the where the doorway is is 
um, it is simply a featureless metal door. Um. And the, where the the dome of the room, the the dome shape of the of the room itself, uh, corresponds to where the, your familiars bonked into the stone. <laughs> and it's just a nondescript stone dome. Yep, it's like you're in the inside of an igloo, in the in terms of the shape of the room. Uh, do friends, you see, do you see the my name? I do not see your name. Uh, we have a situation here. We are not where we thought we were. Yeah, that's what Bruce thought too. Yeah, your cat. So not not in the glitter mountains. No, your cat might be onto something here. <laughs> um, I think. Wow! Credit to Bruce. Yes, well, I mean, if he's if he's getting this information from his talking cat. Uh, you That's think he's incredible. actually getting this? I mean, I have seen amazing things with Bruce, so I can't put it past him. So Yeah, of course I think that. Why would you think otherwise? He's an Academy member who has a cat familiar from another dimension. I mean, yeah. You get it. That's where you get your information when you have a cat from another dimension, right? I'll be And he only takes the form of a cat, which I've been trying to explain to them from day one. Yeah, yeah, obviously. He's a omnipresent multi-dimensional being and he just takes the form of a cat because his real form would probably collapse our minds yeah wrath wrath i get it i get it uh we're we're trapped in a prison by the way okay is there an exit uh there's a door where that door is except it's not a giant dwarf head it is a uh, metal slab and we are in a stone dome there is a handle there is a handle on the door there is a handle yeah on closer inspection (laughs) So we could get through that. Can door. you see the hand? Can you? Where is it? it? Point, point in the direction that. Yeah, the- go over to it. Touch it. You want me to? Okay. Uh, yeah. What's the worst that could happen? I had uh, right over- before you touch it. I'm gonna touch both of you on the back, and I'm gonna cast invisibility. Okay. Woo. I grab the handle, and I pull. The doorway opens into a strange painted hallway. The hallway is painted black and white in a zigzag pattern, such that when you look at it, it creates the optical illusion that the hallway is doing that, like, awful queasy rotation thing. Um, On the other side of the door, there is a small table, a chair, and a coat rack. On the coat rack is a red hat with a feather in it, a red leather jacket, and a over-the-shoulder bag. And on the table is a bowl, a spoon, a glass, like a a glass, just like a drinking glass made of glass. Uh, and a um, bo- a glass, a clear glass bottle that is filled with water, um, as well as uh, uh, the, then the second level of the table. It's like a side table. Um, there are um, several bottles, um, possibly of wine. They're green glass bottles. I instantly the hallway. The, do- the hallway can. And then the, the the hallway like snakes like it's not straight it it it's weirdly painted and it snakes. I I close the door again. I turn around to the other two and I say, "We're they screwed." Can, they can see that, by the way. Uh, okay, so we all see the same yeah, thing. Yeah. And where is it in the illusion? It's when when Sebastian opens the the door from the dwarven mouth. That's what you see on in, inside oh, the door. So it's yeah. lined up with the actual yeah. door. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. And uh, is the handle at the same space? It's, Where's the handle? It's, it's lined up in an optical illusion sort of way. You mm. know. You know what I mean? Like when it, it's it's hurts to look at. <laughs> mm. uh, what we have here is probably an unsolvable puzzle. I have dealt with these before. We will probably 
be captured if we try to engage with this puzzle. <laughs> Unsolvable. Nobody could do it. <laughs> Just let you know. There's a the puzzle. You're saying there's to be solved. I'm, I'm making assumptions. The Queen of Thieves likes to make puzzles that are completely nonsensical, have no logical answer, and cause you to be captured and put into prison. We escaped, of course, but uh, just letting you know, we're in a pickle. Tell us about this puzzle that was so fretful. No. <laughs> oh. Does it defy logic? <laughs> It defies logic. There were cups, there was liquids, there was a poison hallway, and there was no answer. There was mm. no answer whatsoever. That's not fair. That's not a puzzle. That's it's just not fair. a trap. Not fair. Yeah, if there's no answer, then it's not a puzzle. Yeah, then it's not a puzzle. It's just a it's just a, a death game from yeah. from Katarina. Life is a death game. You're fine. That's Deep. Reassuring, maybe? <laughs> Thanks, Rudy. You're welcome. I've seen a lot. So just keep trucking on. So Sebastian, you we need to go in. We we haven't did you see the scepter? You closed the door so quickly. I don't like what I saw in there. Uh also there's uh the Queen's favorite hat and jacket hanging on the uh the hangers there. Um which leads me to believe that uh, Katarina is here somewhere. And um, just letting you know now, if we run into her, then the, the, the whole thing's the whole thing's done. Like, if she finds us out. Uh, but if we catch her off guard in her own place. She might not be expecting us. We might be able mm. to capture the Queen of Thieves. Mm, bring her in. Well, as and Wilhelm would say. Do we saw what was out in the hallway too, correct? I mean, Sebastian seems to have shut the door so quickly that you <laughs> only kind of caught a glimpse of it. Yeah. Sorry, you, you think that we're going to catch the Queen of Thieves uh, unaware and, 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 and bring her in. Yeah? Well, we're already in her refuge. She might not be expecting anyone to show up. I, I grab her. Rudy and I like <laughs> pull her in and I'm like, Sorry, you try. <laughs> yeah, I grab Rudy and I pull myself in towards you because you don't move. And I'm like, Rudy, she probably already knows that we're here. She's watching everything we're doing. She knows everything we're saying. She is on to us. If we make one mistake, if we slip up, she will have our heads. I guarantee it. I grab Sebastian's head. <laughs> And say smashing settle down she's not one of these all-seeing gods she is a person a person you know and grew up with all right she's, she's foiled me at every I turn i still have your head in like my yeah, hand you're just like i still she's foiled she's foiled me rudy at every turn i can't even like begin to understand how, I, I keep trying to get one step ahead of her and i keep failing <laughs> <laughs> well smashing this might be your time, but if you lose it, then it ain't. She's going to get round you again. Take a breath. And I kind of whack his face twice. I say, now get your head on straight. Remember, my job is to keep your head on your shoulders, figuratively and literally. All right, guys. Let's solve a puzzle. And I'm going to open the door back up. Okay, you open the door to the confusing hallway that makes your head hurt. Oof. Once again, in the hallway, there is a small table and a chair and a coat rack. On the coat rack is a red hat and a red leather jacket and a shoulder strap bag. On the table is a bowl and a spoon and a cup, a glass cup, and a glass bottle, clear glass bottle, filled with clear liquid, ostensibly water. On the second lower level of the table are six green glass bottles, each stoppered with a cork. Is You said there's a glass of water? There is a cup. It cup. is not filled with anything. It is not filled. There's um, a glass cup, yep. I walk into the room, and I start rifling around on the table, and I'm just like... No, stop touching usually, stuff. Usually you there's said, a note. Usually there's a note or like a clue or a, a riddle. Um, you you said that she's cunning and 
yet we we may need to take some time to observe the scene yeah there's probably going to be something here that says like one one bottle contains air the other contains death the <laughs> other contains happiness which bottle is the like eh, just it's going to be like here a riddle. somewhere that just sounds like a a headline or like a news clip. okay wrath i don't know you make up a riddle on the spot actually I don't have one, but I think that the best thing to do would be to maybe see what's down that other hallway. Oh, we can just keep going. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> this might just be her like mudroom where you hang she hangs her hat or we go down that hallway and we get disintegrated yeah who knows until we try and then we're invisible aren't we <laughs> yeah so it's just us talking uh i send crowley down the hallway all right um crowley uh flies down the hallway until he is out of sight because uh, the call the, the hallway snakes. Um, I'm gonna go into Crowley's eyes. Okay, Can I hold them up. The the hallway, uh, um, <laughs> the hallway snakes around. Um, one big loop. Um, it feels like it might be snaking back around the circular room you started in, and then it, uh, it all. As it circles back around, it come it comes to another circular room with um, two. That th this circular room um, is more simply appointed. It has two doors leading out of it, both of the similar construction to the first, and there is a plush bed and a dresser drawer and several lanterns hanging in this room. I, uh, bring Crowley back. Uh, alright, we might just... You might just be able to ignore everything I said and, uh, carry on. There we go. Now, do we need to... We don't need to worry about what I assume is her dining room and drinking bar, I don't know. Uh, and there's, uh, other areas down there? Uh, I think I just found the bedroom. We're here to find the scepter, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or if at we least do not disturb anything, we may be able to identify it and then take it, uh, unless it is unattainable, in which case we at least know it's here and we can report back. I mean, the truth is... We are supposed to be just on a uh, information gathering mission, but if we do find the scepter and it's available to us to take, then I don't see why we wouldn't. Uh, you know, then we're ahead of the game. Mm. But also, we are supposed to figure out where we're located, and so far it's only been an illusion. If there's a possibility of us uh, getting a view of outside, maybe finding our bearings. Uh, could be very helpful. Um, so I say we still continue with caution. Keep your guard up. Again, Sebastian, you've you've fought this Katarina many times. She is also a childhood friend. Yeah. Yeah. Then you know her best. I I thought I did. You're the one that would know what to expect. Well, you can figure this out. Whether it's Katarina, you know, or the... Sounds like you know the Queen of Thieves very well. Keep that in mind. We're in her lair, not just Katarina's, but... We can sort it out. Just expect that everything is not what it seems here. Hmm. First off, where do you think she would hide something valuable? Would it be um, her bed again? Well, based on what I know, we're probably going to find some sort of 
tiny hole that we have to traverse through by becoming gas or a cockroach or something of that sort. I mean, if I can see it, then through it, then I can get through. No problem. Shall we keep moving? Yeah. All right. And you are not going to touch any of the objects that you just passed? No. Okay. You head on into the bedchamber. As before, there is a plush four-post bed um, set with many silks. The bed is unmade. There is, um, as in it looks like someone slept in it and did not make tidy the sheets again. Mm -hmm. There is a wardrobe in the room. Um, it is a large wooden wardrobe that uh, that has been carved out of mahogany. The two doors are closed to it. There is a desk table with a lamp set on it. On the table is a deck of playing cards laid out playing a playing card game of so, uh, some kind, perhaps solitaire. The, 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 several of the cards have been laid out in a grid uh, face down. Um, and then the um, beyond, beyond the bed there are two doors leading out of this room. I want to go up to the door on the right, not touch it, but I want to see if there's any sound coming from it. You listen at the door. Give me a perception check. Oh, five. You hear a light trickle of water. Hmm. Um, with my goggles still on, I approach the desk hmm. and just start examining without touching. I'm examining the cards on the table, the deck of cards, mm. and just looking around to see if there's anything unusual about this. Scanning this room, you detect no illusions in here. Um, the there there's nothing that your true sight reveals to be at, uh, that it is not what what it, what it is. This is uh, quite a uh, it's it's an oddly built chamber because it's. At the one sense, there are many pieces of comfortable furniture here, but it's not a very comfortable looking room. It's like someone tried to make the most out of a cell. Um, I very gently does the uh, does the desk have like drawers on it? Um, the the desk does have some drawers. Yes. I very gently see if uh, any of the drawers open. There's three drawers on the desk. Uh, all beside each other. They do open. Um, inside one of the drawers are several um, fancy dress masks. The kind that you would see at a, at, at um, kind of a, a big uh, ball, like a big ball gala dance mask, like the ones that are made of porcelain with feathers around them. Uh, and then there's smaller, more bandit-like masks in, in, in the, the drawer as well. In the other drawer uh, are, are several knives, daggers, crossbow bolts, and weapons that are uh, con easily concealable weapons, essentially. Uh, and in the final drawer um, are, in neat rows, uh, are stacked like li lined out probably about 500 gold coins I very gently close the drawers no clues to the whereabouts of the scepter yet mm. some dripping water over here might be a restroom I'm gonna I walk oh, go over ahead. to the right door, and then I bump into Rudy, and then I walk over to the left door. <laughs> the left door. So there's the left door and the and the right door. Rudy's at the right door, correct? Sure. Yeah. Okay. I think. Did you say right door or did you say left? 
The I one with the trickling water behind it. It's yeah. that door. Okay, it's the right door. Listen. Not a sound on that side. What do you do? We go through one of these doors? Neither of you heard talking or... Is it a regular door? The the doors themselves are made... uh, Are standard house door sized, but they are made they are made of metal and they close quite tightly it's not like underneath um maybe the tiniest crack hmm. i mean all i can say is one's got water one doesn't Rudy, would you like to open one of the doors? I don't particularly want to, but I will. <laughs> we we can leave now um, and report back. No, we gotta we gotta go through at least one. We gotta find out what's beyond here. I'm curious too. I'm not gonna lie. Now, water or no water? I feel safer with water. The sound of water, although the sound of water could drown out other sounds. No sound might be safer. Mm. Wrath? Rudy? Any thoughts? Uh, We're going to probably have to go through both. Yeah. I say we go through the one with the Water. Okay. I step back um, from the door, just watching from afar. You open as... the, the you open the door, and Sebastian, you see this immediately, but Rudy and Wrath, you don't. When you open the door, it appears to be a brick wall behind it. But Sebastian, you can see with your goggles that the brick wall is an illusion. Looking through it, you appear to be in a sewer. It's a sewer tunnel. I, as Rudy and Wrath stare at the door, I walk straight towards it. The wall. (laughs) And through the wall. Okay. (gasps) Wait, are you invisible? Yes. (laughs) As you, uh, uh, um... As you as you do, you you smell the slightest smell of salt water, and a, the a whiff of of sewage. Uh, Kelly, your camera's all out of focus. Yeah. Oh. Um, and the passage that you are in appears to be an aqueduct passage, so uh, a sewer passage that would be bringing water somewhere. Um, the other. The, the passage itself, um, as you come, in, come into it, the tunnel that you're standing in um, has been um, collapsed on one side. Uh, f- in this sewer tunnel, are there any ladders up to the surface or anything like that? There might be, but from what your immediate point of vision, there are not. Um, I go back through the wall. It's just a wall. It's a sewer. Sewer? Anything We're, on the other side? How did you get uh, through the wall? Magic. I mean, it's an illusion. The wall is magic. Not, I got oh. through it with my... It's, it's complicated. That seemed very simple. It was very simple. You walk through the wall. Wow. She is truly the master of illusions. <laughs> uh, we appear to be in a sewer system. 
I can't tell if it's Drakenheim. Uh, actually, great question. When I went out into the sewer, did it smell like the haze? No, it didn't. And from my experiences being the, in many gelatinous it, it, cubes... It was a sewer, but it was not even anywhere close. You've spent a lot of time in the Drakenheim sewers. <laughs> yes, I It have. was a completely different architectural style to anything you've seen in the, like, in the Drakenheim sewers. Uh, we're not in Drakenheim, but I don't know where we are. We're uh, seemingly in one, in some city somewhere in the world in their sewer system. And there's no exit, no other entrance through that. I, I didn't go far. Um, I'm sure that if we're in a sewer system, it means that there's means to get up to the street level, but I didn't want to go too far ahead without you. Hmm. Shall we go through the sewer or take the other door? Well, I still see reason to come back here and investigate this other door, but I think one of our priorities is finding out where we are. And a sewer, which usually means drains that lead up to the streets, could be a prime opportunity to figure out where the heck we are. So that's sewer. just I I am gonna walk into the sewer through the mm -hmm. wall and then I uh I release Bruce from under my cloak and I'm gonna send him to the right. Because I, I assume it's like a, a tunnel yes, that it, we're sort of exiting yeah. into. Yep, yep. It, it, so I'm it, gonna send him to the right. Mm -hmm. Um as Bruce comes out of the sewer, down the sewer passage, the sewer passage that you're, that you're in, there is a bit of a flow of water, but this passage itself is collapsed on both sides. However, um, the with a it appears to be a natural collapse of, of some kind, um, but there is. Not the main part of the line, but there is a sub line that comes out from a gate um, coming down this, this hallway, leading to what looks like a what is a metal sluice gate um, that uh, that can be cranked open. Hmm. Uh, I recall Bruce and then send him the other way. Just to see if it's any different. Uh, the other way down the sewer path. That's the whole area. So basically, oh, okay. you step out from the queen's room into a sewer tunnel that is, it's a straight section about two, about maybe 100 feet long um, mm -hmm. that is collapsed at either end and blocked off. But okay. then there is this secondary sewer like pipeline of a slew that leads to a sluice gate and that how can be cranked open. How big is that secondary passage? Ten feet wide. Whereas the 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 main sewer passages down here are about are about twenty feet wide. So if we crank this gate open, it might lead to somewhere, or it might lead to flood in this area. Um, from the outside, it, can we tell where the door is? From inside, from inside the sewer, I look back at where i walked if through. if you came this way um no you the 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 illusion that covers it from the other side perfectly masks over the, the door so there's no like obvious marking like you would have to have your own you would probably have to feel along the wall yeah. till you found it yeah to crank or not to crank crank it Rudy? Rudy? Will you crank crank it? <laughs> Can I open the, the gate? Excuse me? You mean crank it? <laughs> I crank open. <laughs> Thank you. Invisibly. I actually have no idea where Rudy is. I... <laughs> it just starts cranking. Yeah. You crank open the gate um, and it leads to a 
It opens into a square room. Um, the room has several pipes, six in all, that are coming down the sides of the room from the left and right. Um, and they for there's kind of like a canal around the outer side that's about five feet deep where these pipes would be draining into. The, currently, though, the pipe, like just a trickle of water is coming in through, through the pipes. Um, there is a walkway that leads directly across the, the, the room to another sluice gate that is also closed. There are cranks on the inner sides of the sluice gates, too. So if we want to, if we close this and want to go back, we can. Correct. Okay. Yeah. In the middle of the room, there is... Um, The, in the middle of the room on the platform that the canal goes around, though, there's something curious. In Somebody has placed several stone tiles. They're rectangular, and they're made of stone, but they have the same design on the back of them as the cards that were in the room before. There's 16 of them. We need to go write down <laughs> what the cards are. This, I guess, this might be a secondary entrance to the ref refuge. Maybe a way for someone to find their way here, or for her to find her way here. It's possible. Uh, this is a bit of a wild guess, but again, we're here. We're here to gather information. If we start touching anything, we're going to leave signs that we were here. It's possible that there's some sort of game or riddle or puzzle to get to the hiding place that she might keep her most valuable belongings, like a scepter. I'm wondering, though, if those cards have anything to do with this. It seems very suspicious that they're laid out similar. Should we at least write down what order those cards were in? Yes. I think we should write down these tiles and the cards. And I don't think we should touch anything yet, but if we do manage to gather enough information, we're going to make it easier to break in here. Mm -hmm. Or yeah, we see. just go for it and try to break in. Um, I may suggest one thing. We return to the original room and go through that second door. We could, if we find ourselves too far through this channel, we may in fact lock ourselves out mm -hmm. and which would be fine if we intend to leave. And then we can report back to Eldrick where we have been, but we may not get back to that second door. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Well, I, right. I I have a hunch that we are on the outskirts looking in as we were when we originally arrived. Okay. But do you can do you agree? Uh I just want to figure out where we are and uh yeah, get the lay of this area as best I can. The more information we can gather the easier it's going to be for the next team to come on in and or whoever's coming back to get the scepter. Okay, let's go back. Would you like to go back? And, Close uh, the gate and... Yeah. I, I go back and I go to walk back into the area, but I've taken my goggle. I've put my goggles up and I walk right into the wall <laughs> face first. Like 20 feet yeah. off. Yeah, you walk back to the, the, the previous room. Yeah. Yeah, and I I want to take note on the table about like which order. It's like 16 cards, right? There's 
laid laid on, on on the table are actually not sixteen cards. Um, they're uh, instead they're laid out thirty two cards, uh, oh. and they're all face down. Hmm. Oh, never mind. I thought they were. <laughs> no, no, these still might be connected. Hmm. We can add them to my book. They're but right. they're laid out in a, in a grid in the same way that the sixteen ones are are before. But yeah, there's thirty two cards that are that are laid out there all face down. Maybe and somehow the, these are connected magically to the the cards in there. And then there's the remaining cards of the deck that are in a pile beside. And sorry, the tiles weren't showing card faces, but they were showing the same design as the back yes. of these cards. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. I guess we try the uh, other door. I think that might be best. Hmm. You open the other door into a a room into what looks like another converted sewer passage. It's the other side of the block, but then this side of the of the sewer block, um, it it comes to a dead end. So someone. The middle part has been blocked off, but this this ends in in an alcove. Someone has. There are several alcoves that are in this room. Um, there are twelve in total. Within each of the alcove is about a foot wide, and within um, within ten of the alcoves are several small chests that are each about um, a, a bit large enough to fit into the palm of your hand. Each of the chests are made of solid gold and are labeled. I go close to the first chest to read the label. The, the, this chest says labeled on it 50,000 gold pieces in in coinage and assorted gems. Oh, I could really use that. <laughs> I go to the I go to the next chest. Uh the 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 next chest um set says uh on it um Scepter of Saint Vitruvio. What is it, Sebastian? Uh, this chest is labeled the Scepter of Saint Vitruvio. And it's quite small. It says it right on it? It says it right on it, but it is a tiny chest. Mm. Mm. The the label written on the chest is is, is definitely written with like a handwritten label that is stuck on it on on the box. I'm not going to lie, I am concerned about the situation here. Uh, I don't I don't want to go ahead and say we found it cuz that seems unlikely. Uh, but this is a big clue. I mean, it might be have something to do with it. For sure. Do we know how to open these tiny chests? This could be simple, enlarge, reduce. I remember that. Could be. Or they could or be. Or some sort of pocket dimension of sorts. Yeah. It could be just a simple um, uh, looking retrieval. At, looking at the chests themselves, they are exquisite in um in their their qual quality um it is obviously it's a tiny replica chest like it it isn't necessarily the the full uh, a full-size chest the scepter of saint vitruvio would definitely not fit in this this thing um and um looking at them they are made of of what appear to be like gold or metal or various other metals uh but not like the wooden iron that you would expect of a chest What's in the other ones? 
Uh, that one has a lot of gold and gems. Uh, I'm going to go to the next one. Um, the next... Uh, um, several of the other chests are, are labeled with various, uh, various tre- treasures. Um, one of them is labeled Fifth Sword of Caspia. Um, and another one of the 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 chests is uh, um, is labeled um, with uh, with um, with um, academy disguises. Oh, oh. She has one of the swords of Caspia. She has one of the relics of St. Vitruvio. She has teleportation circles to all of the Academy Towers, as well as disguises for the Academy. Why would that be in a tiny chest when the others are worth their weight in gold? Because the secrets of the Academy are worth far more than their weight in gold. And being able to disguise yourself, she could have been walking in and out of Academy Towers across the globe f- for years. She could know. That is absolutely against the rules of the Academy. It's brilliant. She probably knows so many secrets of the Academy. Which means she's probably very powerful. Probably more powerful than you realize. Sebastian, you said that there is a very strong chance that she knows that we are here. That's a concern of mine. Um, Every time that I thought I was sneaking around under the nose of the Queen of Thieves before, she's been staring right at me. Together, do you think we could figure out how to open this chest? I, I say this because if she knows we're here and we leave the means to return may not be available what if these are all tiny chests thought and concern Mm -hmm. together as one we could throw them all into my bag of holding and leave concern pocket dimensions there's the concern if they're pocket dimensions uh just okay do i happen to know if you put two pocket dimensions near each other is there any sort of indication like Mm. like the way that when you put two opposing magnet or two give me an arcana check can can we can we be discussing this together can i help yeah yeah uh, as we as we talk it out, well, actually, I think sure. The, whichever one of you has the higher account of bonus can roll the check, and the other grants the other advantage. I, Roth, I'm gonna take a guess here. <laughs> <laughs> I forget if the key gives me expertise or advantage, but you I, can. Make it the gives roll. you expertise. I'm just thinking about it. I'm gonna think out loud. I'm gonna help you. What's uh, what would expertise be for you? Uh, I think it's only a plus. It, expertise is proficient times two. Yeah. Yeah. Eight then. Oh, you're one more than me. Okay, so But no, you're you're doing it. I'm I'm helping. Okay. I'm okay. thinking. I, I'm like bouncing ideas off. I'm a soundboard. Uh that's gonna be a seventeen. Talking it over, the two of you realize that these are the material components for a secret chest spell. The chests are the material components? So, you know that there is a spell called Secret Chest. You've actually seen Aldor the Immense use it. Mm. It is a spell that conjures a... Uh, an, th- these items are basically the key that conjure a chest from the ethereal plane that is used to store items. So, these uh, these chests... Each of these chests would... would allow whoever cast the spell to pull the chest back do i happen to know what it would take to do it you would need to travel to the ethereal plane 
and find the chest there, wherever it is. Okay, wait, this is this is actually good. This is something we can bring back to the team. Um, it, it, okay, in my knowledge of Arcana and my brief attempt at studying at school... Uh, How big is the ethereal plane? Like, if we're talking square miles. <laughs> like, like, if we go into the ethereal plane well, from the location of I, the chest... I, I, th- I think more accurately to say, actually, the ethereal plane is is the space between worlds basically right so you so the chest is somewhere in the space between worlds it's going to be hard to find <laughs> hey, i'm just i'm just trying is, to capture how hard it would to be to go on a chest quest well is there question a, yeah y'all have this like counter spit like undo spell like thing that you can do at the academy i have one better we hold it hostage if we can, if we hold these chests, neither of us have the ability to recall the correct chest. We take them all and we force her to come to the table. Hmm. That's, I don't want to say genius because, I mean, I already called you a master, but wow. It was Bruce's idea. He was looking at them and they looked shiny. Ah. Uh. All right, well, oh. Bruce, genius. Uh, but we probably can't put them... Uh, okay, so logically, if these are the keys, they they aren't an extra-dimensional space yet. They just summon an extra-dimensional space. They, they summon a chest back from an extra-dimensional oh. space, yes. So I can put them in a bag of holding safely? Technically, yes. Yeah. Uh, is there any logic behind the idea that when something gets pulled out of the space between worlds... It needs to be close by to the source. So if we were to enter the space between worlds from this location, we would be closer to the chess than not, if we entered from... Not no? with this spell. No. No. Okay. No. No. In fact, this spell, like, puts it in a random location in the space between worlds, like, making it, like, the... It's basically, um, one of the things that you do know about the spell is that, um... If the chest isn't retrieved within 60 days, there's a cumulative 5% chance per day that the chest is lost forever in the space between worlds. So, so she, in theory, she would have to come back here every, every, every so often. Every, at least every two months, yeah. Yeah. And if, I guess, Rudy's question to you guys is, if... Um, she sent the chests away from here. Does she have to summon them back in this exact spot, or could she summon them back from Any, here? anywhere? You can as long as, as, she long has as the you key. have as long as you have the chest, you can Ooh. bring the chest back. Wrath, I think you might be onto there? something. How many chests are there? There's ten, ten in total. Wrath, if we steal all of her keys, she has two months, depending on when the last time she was here. This queen of thieves, she is. Has, has held you hostage before. The I best way to fight would be to put it on the table that if she does not agree to bargain, that we lose the chest forever. No one can have them. And if she returns the scepter, she can have the other chests. Simple and, as that. Uh, question, though. If we... Do you think there's any sort of alarms or something on these? Like, are we only allowed to grab one? I don't know. Um, Can you, there, is there a way to gather the magic in the room? I don't know. I, I'm i going to... Can you give me a few minutes? How, long, how much time do you need? I need about ten minutes. Are you going to cast Identify? I was going to cast Detect Magic. I'm going to cast Identify on the like pedestal that they are on. They're in an alcove. Or uh, the alcove. Each of the alcoves has been warded with the alarm spell. So the, ilu- the invisibility has dropped to cast this. Um, I also take the, the time, the ritual. 
anything else I can determine? So Wrath and I walking around the rooms, I'm casting Detect Magic, he's casting Identify. Do I determine any other little tricks of magic using Detect Magic? Um, in this room, no. Each of the objects is simply with... The, if it, they, they basically, using the Identify spell, there is an alarm spell cast upon each of these these chests it appears to be a modified alarm spell perhaps one with a extended duration and range um the the typical alarm spell only lasts for eight hours the identify mm -hmm. spell that you cast determines that this this alarm has been augmented in some way um and so if these if these are touched whoever cast that alarm spell will know that they were touched mm-hmm I mean, the point is that she's going to know anyway. Um, again, with the teleportation, we can teleport to a teleportation circle, but we don't have to be on a teleportation circle to do that, correct? Uh, correct, yes. What's the casting time? For teleport, it's one action. Okay, final question. <laughs> how many we chests can you grab and how fast can you do well, it? <laughs> No, we don't know where we are yet. Do we go back out the sewers? Okay. We either grab these and run into the sewers, and if we can't find a way to the surface, we teleport out. We grab these and teleport out immediately and just oh. hope for the best. I mean, is this an alarm spell that just sets off an alarm, or like you said, it's modified? She is going to know. Is this door behind us going to close and trap us in here? I mean, we can teleport out. Can we? If there's... The Queen of Thieves, she's smart. She obviously has been at the Academy Yes, this for longer periods of time than both of you. Right, I did this. detect magic. I didn't see any, any <laughs> warding here. I mean, we've been able to cast spells in here. But if something sets off, maybe it... I don't know. No, Rudy you're right. Is, uh, is right to be cautious. Remember... Set, knowing the trap, but not being caught by the trap. Is it better, then? Also remember, detect magic only detects magic on things that you can see. Mm. Mm. Is it smarter, then, if we do our original plan and, uh, uh, what would Veo do? not steal the chest she'd probably be cautious Veo would tell me not to be hasty don't cast fireball on everything Rudy what would Wilhelm do I don't know, we'd have a rule or something to tell yeah, himself what he should do. Uh, what would Wilhelm's father do? I guess that's the question that we asked. For what 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 rules did he, did he have a rule for? Like I don't know, stealing things or you know, solving puzzles or probably don't steal things. Yeah, that would have been a rule. That's He's a stupid honorable. rule. Don't, <laughs> I don't steal. think he actually had an explicit rule, but I don't think he would have a rule that governs stealing things. I just think he wouldn't have a rule that said he could steal things he's much too honorable. How, how, how many rules does he have about a hundred hundred i mean he, he is an honorable man and i agree stealing's not great but the queen of mm. thieves probably stole these things technically and these stolen. are stolen items anyway so we're kind of she like, might have earned that gold though you never know the, in my experience uh, yeah, honorable men know. are usually the most likely to die in any given situation so uh We'll see how that works out for our new king. Not that I'm not wishing that on him. I uh, want to make that clear. Um, one, that's not. So what are you guys going to do? One uh, question about the replicas. From what we know, um, well, uh, Sebastian, <laughs> from what we know about the, um, the replicas, if they are destroyed, what happens? The contents are lost forever. We still don't know where we are. We were supposed Love to re report her. back. It is very difficult to. I I am 
hesitant, but I understand if you wish to leave this place and report the whereabouts. It is that we are here, we have access, and if we leave, we may lose that. But I, I will not press the issue. We can always. No, you're making tell a good point. If we decide. leave and tell everybody what we found, and send a crew back here, and the chests are gone, then then it was all for nothing. The Queen of Thieves could already know we're here. We that could have set only- off another alarm. That was it. Was what you said at the beginning? If she, if she is as crafty as you say she is, and she knows our entire whereabouts, and she's just watching us and waiting for her opportunity to strike, then it wasn't our mission. Would be the worst. But what's the worst that could happen? <laughs> A many a bad thing, Sebastian. Yeah, actually, there's a lot of things that could actually happen that would be terrible. Yeah, but but I I what's the confident. worst that could happen? You know, you know. Well, what if is she the does worst show that up, can happen? We just deal with her. If right, we Rudy? leave them, the worst that would happen if we leave them is that we lose access to them. And the worst that would happen if we take them, we could die. She knows. She knows uh, about us, but it depends on how quickly she can get here. It also depends on... I mean, we have a teleportation spell. We can be out of here in under six seconds. Rudy, can you hold the door? <laughs> can I hold the door? <laughs> Just in case. I can hold the door. I can try. Sebastian, maybe Raph? we just take as many chests as we can. We take them all, Raph. We take them all. You take the five on that side. I'm going to take the five on this side. When I say go, we grab them. Start with the scepter. Got it. And I'm going to start with these uh, academy robes. <laughs> I'm just thinking, haven't we learned anything from y'all with the thing under the bed and the poison gas and all that? He survived. He's fine, Rudy. He's the most qualified person to ele- evade another trap. Are you, you guys going you to take in a cat like <laughs> take do it. Do take it. Do it. take the chest or not? Yes. Yes. Okay, I'm holding okay. the door. You grab the, <laughs> you 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 grab as many of the chests as as you you want to. You, you you grab them all. You have them in your hands. Reach your hands. And we run out the door. Let's get out of here. Okay, you run out the door. Teleport into the se- into the sewer. Oh, we're going into the sewer. We're not just yes, teleporting. If we, if we head to the sewer, we can find out where the space is. All crank, right. Crank the gate. Crank the gate. I crank the gate. All right. Um, you head into the, in, into the sewer, into the square room, yeah? Um, yeah. and start cranking open the sluice gate. As you turn the crank, the gate that you came into this room closes with a hiss. And then you hear a flushing sound as water begins to fill the room from the pipes. And that's where uh, we'll take our break. <laughs> <laughs> we only have an hour left in the night, so we'll take a really quick break just because I know everyone needs it, and we'll come right back on in a bit. <laughs> and we are back from our very quick, very late break. Uh, we want to play some D&D because we're not going to be able to play for a little while, so let's get to it, okay? All right. This is the room that you are in. It is a large. It is a large switching chamber in the sewer system, and you came through um, the the gates. Um, basically, there's two sluice gates, one at the top, uh, the top end, and one at the bottom end, right? And as you ran into the room, w- the first sluice gate was already open, leading into the room. You had to crank the the one back. You pulled the crank, Rudy, and as you pulled the crank, it just 
pops off and the door closes behind you, leaving you trapped inside the room. All of a sudden, there's a rush and boom of rushing water as the pipes activate and begin flooding the room uh, and and water begins flooding in, in into the into the room. Um, to remind you, there basically there's the canal in this room that is about five feet deep um, and is currently filled with a foot of water. The room itself is twenty feet high, um, and the um, the platform then in the middle has these rectangular shaped stone cards laid face down there are 16 of them uh so each of those like funny looking tiles on the map represents one of these one of these tiles uh are the sluice gates solid they are solid they are storm gates so they would be meant to stop water uh Mm -hmm. yeah okay we're in initiative order so as the water begins flooding into the room sebastian what are you going to do Uh, first, very quick question. How fast is the water level rising? Do I have... You would need... A- uh, um, do you have, a, do you have a, an accurate sense? The, the water is sputtering in right now. Um, and with six different pipes, I guess every round, someone's going to roll a d6 to find out how <laughs> fast the water moved in that round. <laughs> oh, okay. boy. All right. Um... <laughs> Oh my. Oh man. Okay. Decisions. All right. Um, I look to the tiled floor. Does it look like I can interact with it in any way? The tiles are. are so there's the stone of the floor itself, but then these re- rectangular tiles are placed on top of the floor. They look. They're, they're stone. They look rather heavy, but you could probably pick one up as an action. I grab the cornerstone here and flip it over. You flip it over, and on the opposite side is a heart shaped like the heart in a suit of cards. I look up, and I'm just like, does this mean anything to anybody? We we wrote down the how the cards were arranged in the room, but we did not. Mm, you did write not. Down you didn't flip them the over. Upside down mm. part. So, um, no. Short answer, no. All right, flipping flipping over these stone slabs is an action. Um, is there anything else you'd like to do, Sebastian? Um. Oh man. Not at the moment. Okay. Wrath, it is your turn. Uh, I want to ask, what time of day is it? Um, mid-afternoon, like mid-morning, sure. Okay. Like, we, we left, like, basically. Yeah. In the, uh... Yeah. I want to cast telekinesis. All right. You cast telekinesis. Would you like to do anything as you telekinesis? I want to look at the opposite gate and mm-hmm. attempt to raise the gate. Okay. With telekinesis, you you grip onto the gate um, and try to lift it. Something has magically sealed it shut. Oh. Well, um, does that count as my action? Casting telekinesis is an action, yeah. Can I instead then, feeling the resistance, use the telekinesis to flip over another one of the tiles? Give me an arcana check. Ooh, uh, 15. Sure, yeah. So, so feeling the resistance right away, knowing that I can lift a thousand pounds with this telekinesis immediately yeah. feeling the resistance knowing I, that there's some kind the of barrier. Gate probably actually even weighs more than a thousand pounds to be honest oh really yeah 
then I um, I attempt to flip over one of the. Which one would you like to flip? Um, opposite side, opposite corner. Uh, could you ping the corner, please? Yeah, opposite uh, corner to um, the one that Sebastian. Okay. It flips over, revealing a diamond, like in the suit. Uh, in in the suit. However, as it flips over, there's a shaking of magic, and both, uh, both both of the um, <laughs> both flip back over again, um, and with with a crash. Flipping back back over with, with a crash, and as they crash out, there is suddenly you see an arc of lightning <laughs> that goes through the water. <laughs> oh, with a crackle. Oh, uh, we should have looked at the cards. <laughs> oh, we definitely looked at the cards. <laughs> Was there any indication that either of these symbols affected the water water at all? Or do we have to solve the whole board? Rudy, it is your turn. I want to flip over my current... I take a step back and I flip over the one that I'm on. The what I was on. You flip over, revealing a <gasps> heart. Perfect. And I'm gonna action surge, <laughs> and I'm gonna run over to this one that near Sebastian that he did before, and do the heart as well. Okay, the heart flips over, and the two stay in place. I... Okay. I mean, nice. That's what Rudy. I do. Nice. So we have to match them, if you guys. <laughs> didn't get that explain the, is this like the puzzles that you've encountered Sebastian we're all going to die <laughs> <laughs> all right we get to the end of the round and the water level rises one of you can roll me a d6 who wants to do it Not me. I'll do it because I roll the three all right the water level rises by three inches And how tall is the platform? The room is 20 feet high. Okay. It was five five feet? It, it, yes, and the platform's five feet up. There was our, our so to to be to be precise, um, there are 228 inches left r r remaining right now. Okay. Um, and it just filled by three more inches. Um, but, uh, it seems that, uh, incorrect guesses are going to increase the speed of the fill. Okay. All right. Top of the round. Sebastian, it's your turn. All right. Question on whether or not you'll allow this. If I use twinned spell on levitate, can I still do it one at a time instead of both of, like, I cast levitate to flip one and then use yeah twin yeah spell. I'll, I'll allow it i'll allow this all right yep. so i'm gonna cast levitate on uh let's do the one under houdini the one <laughs> under houdini okay. uh this one and i i cast levitate and i start to turn the stone it flips over revealing a diamond as it does so there is a shock of electric energy that ru rushes through uh through the the, the water um and the oh. Uh, and all three flip back over. Oh! oh. This is not the oh. way I thought this was going <laughs> to go. Just... <laughs> Uh-oh. Okay, okay. Developments, developments. Okay. Oh, I thought we were... Okay, okay. <laughs> it could never be so easy. Can I still twin spell and flip back over the first heart? We know that there's a heart. Yep. All right. So I twin spell. You flip the flip it back over. Roll a d6. One. 
The water rises by one inch. Wrath, it is your turn. Um, I'm going to flip over the opposite corner. Okay. You flip it over, revealing the spade. Those don't match. So they flip back over. There's electric shocks through the water. Give me a d6. Five. The water raises by five inches. Okay. Rudy, it is your turn. I want to flip over. Uh, Rudy, I... The I, water is now at 30 inches of height. So that, Rudy, you know, um, out of 240. It, it, I think we have figured out the game. Um, I guess the strategy becomes, do we discover as many new objects as we can or try to uh, reveal what we know? I think if, if there's 16 squares and four of each suit, then finding four at least of one might be the best option. We already know where two diamonds are and two hearts are so let's try to at least find those and then whatever one we find and... last if we can find all of them then we do those four in a row and we'll see what happens done all right so we we know where those so, are so um, new new uh new tiles new mm. tiles until we can find four of a soup um i'm gonna do the one directly below me uh ping it again please that this one, one? Okay. this one it flips over Revealing a diamond. Yes. All right. And roll a d6, Rudy. Four. The water is now 34 inches high. So that you know it hits the platform at 60. Oh, sorry. So from the... 60 is a platform. Yeah. And, and it's 200 how many high? Uh, uh, um, 240 inches would be the total height. <clears throat> and it's currently at 30... 34. Four. Okay. Yeah. Cool, 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 cool. That's okay. What I wanted to know. <laughs> Sebastian, it's your turn. Um, I'm going to twin levitate again on uh, this. This one right here. Okay. Revealing a diamond. And this one here, which was also a diamond. Okay. And then I, I point to the bottom corner. Bottom right corner, baby. Wrath, it's your turn. Wrath, using his telekinesis, uh, flips over the bottom right corner uh, tile. You flip over the four tiles. Thump, 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 thump. And they glow briefly and lay f and sink into the surface of the of the of the stone. Okay, so Rinse we, repeat. We need yeah, so no help. change, right? The doors like I try I, I want to like look at the doors. The, the there is seats. a rush of water and suddenly appearing mm -hmm. in the room from out of the water is a water elemental. <laughs> <laughs> Flushes into the room and rises up. It comes in it comes into the room with a with a whirl. Um and uh it uh it will be in the initiative order now. Uh but Rudy, it is your turn. I I am going to say Boys, my axes ain't doing nothing against that. Oh, and Wrath, roll me a d6. Oh. Four. The water is now 38 inches high. 38. Okay. Um, I am going to do the one that Bruce is on. Uh, this one here? Yep. I'm going to move Bruce. 
Thank you. It reveals a spade. Okay. Okay. Um, that was my action, right? Yes, correct. Ooh. anything I can do. All right. Roll me a yeah. d6 for the water rising. Six. Sorry. All right. The water is now at 44 inches in height. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. Well, the water elemental is going to come soaring into the room towards Sebastian. Mm. And it is going to attack you with its slams, Sebastian. It makes two, uh, um, actually, it's going to try to whelm you. Um, give me a, uh, it, it um, moves into your space, and I need a strength saving throw. No, not strength. <laughs> <laughs> no. How does a 15 sound? Uh, actually, exactly what you needed. Yay. Uh, yeah, so it, it um, you, uh, if it's, you are pushed out of the elemental space, though, uh, so it pushes you into the water. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> With a splash. Hey. How hey. far down is the... It's only, a, like, it's, it's reachable. Yeah, it's only, like, about four feet deep right now, so it doesn't hurt you, okay. but you're in it. It is your turn, Sebastian. Um, I'm going to hop out. Mm-hmm. Uh, send Crowley fluttering around this thing. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really know what that's going to do, but you know. Um, and actually, yeah, Crowley's not really going to help me here. I turn and I'm like, I am trying to concentrate. <laughs> and I blast, uh, I hold up my staff and I blast Cone of Cold out of my staff into the water elemental. All right. Um, Oh, good. It's not immune to cold damage. Uh, so I got to make a con save? Yes. Ooh. Uh, I get a 16. No. So that's going to be... Roll those dice. Uh, Uh, 34 damage. The blast of cold freezes pieces of the water elemental which shatter on the ground. But it is still uh, still collecting water and moving around. Uh, actually, sorry, I forgot to say this. I was thinking this, forgot to say it. Uh, can I quicken that spell? Yes, I will allow that. Sorry, I totally meant to do that because now I want to uh, flip the one in front of me here. Uh, with levitate, correct? Uh, just with my hands as my action. Okay. Okay. So I blast him and I turn and I grab the tile and throw up, all my you're back You're up into... on the thing again, right? You yeah, I back climbed up. back up. Yeah, okay. yeah. I hopped up. There's a club. <gasps> the other club was the corner, yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Wrath, it is your turn. Um, I. Or sorry, this is spade. It's spade. Uh, so seeing right. as Sebastian is probably the most efficient at flipping tiles, um, I'm gonna start walking towards this awful creature, and I'm gonna shoot some beams of energy at it. So awesome. I send Bruce in. Um. I get a uh, 22 to hit. That is a hit. You, your Eldritch Blast sends splashes of water blasting its its uh, amorphous form apart. If Crowley is also helping, does that give him advantage on two Eldritch Blasts? Sure. Uh, so 14 force damage, and I'm going to knock him back uh, 10 feet. All right. Push him back 10 feet into the water. And then as I get closer... 
Um, I'm going to shoot again, and I got a 29 to hit. Also nice. a hit. For uh, another 14 force damage. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, just going, getting closer, and then I'm going to fire again, this time without advantage. Uh, a 21 to hit. Wow, three hits. Uh, that one only for uh, um, six force damage. Okay. Still a good barrage. I need both you and Sebastian to roll me a d6. Forgot to get your the water level for you, oh, yeah. Sebastian. Uh, one. One. Okay. Needed that. All right. Rudy, it's your turn. We're at 46 right now, right? Okay. 46 um, inches, yeah. I'm going to do the one immediately to my right. Uh, this one. Uh, drum roll. Lucky guess. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Good job. Okay. Yes, Rudy. <laughs> All right, and roll me a d6, Rudy. Oh, gosh. No more sixes. Six. Oh, my God. All right. The water rises up. Made up for it. 52. It is almost at the level of the platform. All right. Well, we go to the top of the round with the water elemental, uh, who it, it is. Does its ability recharge? Ooh, it does. Uh -oh. So it moves <laughs> over both Sebastian and Wrath, and you can both make me strength saving throws, guys. Oh no! Uh, Seventeen. Come on, big money, big money, big money. Uh, four. <laughs> okay, so Wrath. Uh, you take 18 points of bludgeoning damage, uh, and you are restrained uh, and grappled by the elemental and unable to breathe unless you can breathe water. Um, and I used to. <laughs> Sebastian, you are flung into the into the canal again. Ugh. Um, I made my con check for telekinesis, but I am drowning. Okay. Uh, Sebastian, it's your turn. Uh, uh, I, <laughs> I hop back out of the water. Um, and I am going to, again, twin levitate. Okay. On this corner one first. Okay. It flips over, revealing the last spade. Junk, right. junk, junk, junk. All of them shake, sink into the floor. Um, and uh, with that, um, there is another flushing, rushing noise. <laughs> uh oh. As. Uh -oh. A another water element. Oh, as a another water elemental is ejected into the room uh, after uh, after the this. <laughs> uh, are we winning? Is this what we're supposed to be doing? Um, I'm gonna use my second one to to grab the the tile right next to the one I flipped. This one. Okay. That reveals a club. Ooh. Okay. Uh, and roll me a d6, Sebastian. I'm going to roll the same one. It's rolled two ones. And it's going to get a third one. Oh! Yeah. Uh, Usually that would be a bad Not for dice. damage. We don't use that one for damage. No, All right. Don't. What a trash die, but it's saving my life today. <laughs> okay. Well, with that, Rudy, it's your turn. Or sorry, Wrath, oh. it's your turn. You're currently drowning, Wrath. <laughs> Been drowning my whole life. Uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> it mostly in the expectations of my parents. So what I'm gonna do is, <laughs> is wait, why am I talking with bubbly mouth? I just say in your mind, I'm fine. Keep flipping tiles. And uh, I, I heard you. Um, I'm gonna attempt to push 
the uh, giant creature off of me using my telekinesis. Ah, cool move. Uh, so you hold it with your own telekinetic grip and kind of pull it off you. Yeah, uh, I, I think I can't restrain it because I don't think you I can what? restrain the creature, oh. but I, I want to try to just like push it. Yeah, so I think what we'll say there is give me a, a, a basically a spell attack roll. Um, and I'll have that against its strength saving throw. throw? How would I rule that? You're trying to push it off of you. I think that's appropriate for telekinesis. Or should I just make a saving throw against your spell? Uh, the only reason I want to ask about it is because normally I would just grab it and it would make a strength check, but technically I can't restrain it. I can, yeah, you make an ability check with your spellcasting ability contested by its strength check. So make your ability check. I your... got a 26. Okay, I got an 18. So you can, I, I'm going to say you can move it. I'm going to say that you can use this to escape a grapple. Absolutely. So yeah, you can pull it off you and and um, move it 30 feet in any direction. So I'm going to send it to the opposite corner uh, of the room, uh, way over here. I'm going to I'm going to throw it into the wall. Cool. Um, and we'll we'll treat it as restrained by your telekinetic grip. Yeah. I the only thing I did. I don't know if I can I restrain a water elemental. I wasn't sure if I could. Oh yeah, I just wanted yeah. To push I, it. I guess you can't because they are actually immune to the restrained condition. So I yeah I I don't want to overstep, but I, I think guess you would I just want to be able. To... I guess you need a. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to push it off. A water bottle allowed. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, no, that's great. Is there anything else you'd like to do, Wrath? Um, that is um, all the action from Wrath. Alrighty, Rudy, we're over to you. Um, I am going to flip over my current th tile that I'm on. Clubs. Mm -hmm. Clubs! Yes, clubs. The water elementals. So this is so this one is not restrained. Oh, do you need me to roll a d6? Yeah, and I need Wrath to as well. Oh yes, yes. Three. One! Whew! Almost up to the platform level though. I know. Alright. This one's gonna sail for Sebastian, and this one's gonna sail for Wrath. And they're just both going to make attacks with their, their slams. Uh, uh, I'm going to Entropic Ward, uh, causing disadvantage. Okay, uh, that turns a 25 into a 12. Yes. And the second attack is a 22. <laughs> I don't do anything to that one. Okay. Uh, that one is going to be 13 face. bludgeoning damage. And Sebastian, against you, I get a 13 and a 22. The 22 hits. For 13 bludgeoning damage. I've, uh, I, I failed Ow. my, uh, the telekinesis begins to, mm. to wane. Alrighty. And, uh, with that, the water on the turn is over, and the water rises by six inches to 63 inches. No, we're oh. standing in a puddle. Yep. Yep. All right. Sebastian, it is your turn. And just in time, I'm going to shock all of us. Um, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to, again, twinning levitation, going boom, boom on these tiles. This one right here. Got a, got a good feeling. Okay, club, club. Come on. It's going to be a club. club. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> It flips over, revealing the heart, and a surge of electricity arcs through the entire chamber. You can all give me a dexterity saving throw. No way. 20. I got seven, but I'm going to use Indomitable. Okay. Uh, 14. All right. Uh, Sebastian, what did you get, sir? Uh, 20. You succeed. Wrath, you fail. 
Rudy? Nine. You fail as well. The two. Uh, it is 20 damage for those of you that failed, 10 for Sebastian. Oh. Uh, I hop. <laughs> I see I see the tile and I jump. I'm All like, right. keep going. Um, and then can I continue to flip? Uh, you, you can, uh, but the, um, but what's going to happen here is, just give me a moment here. I've never burned through sorcery points like this before. So it really just depends on what one is next. Oh, did I? Did I, oh, yeah. They flip back over. The 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 clubs and the heart flip back over. I'm going to flip this one here. Alrighty. Yes. New new avenues. It's a heart. Heart 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 heart. That's we know it. where the four hearts are. We got this. Yeah. All right. Well, with that. We go to, uh, that was Sebastian's turn, correct? Yeah. Uh, so we're going to go to Wrath. Um, I'm just going to update my health on, <laughs> on the old uh, roll 20 there. Um, I, I look at this water creature and I yell, enough! And um, I, I, I step back. And I look at both of them and I say, you will obey your true master, Rudy, and you will flip tiles as she sees fit. And I cast mass suggestion. <laughs> okay. Um, I have to make it. I'm not immune to being charmed. No. Uh, wisdom save, uh, 19. Uh, well... Uh, I get they both fail. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Rudy Alan is your master. She will tell you what tiles to flip. Okay. The two <laughs> elementals will uh, will proceed to li listen to Rudy's suggestion. Uh, to that suggestion. <laughs> Rudy, will you please uh, tell them uh, what to do? Of course I will. <laughs> Let's get them flipping hearts. And I point out the spots with the hearts. It's, uh, Alrighty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they co they come over and they each flip one of the tiles, revealing the three the three hearts. Um, the water level rises up uh, uh, a little bit more as that as that happens. But I think from there, the th you'll be able to flip over the remaining tiles. Yeah? Yeah. Did yeah. you flip over the last... some help. We just the, needed some help. The last of the tiles. The the water, ultimately, I guess it would take another round or, or two. So uh, I'll just roll this. The, wa in, the water ultimately does rise up to your waists <laughs> as you flip over the last tile. But with the elementals ha helping you, as the last tile is flipped... The sluice gates shake open and the water drains out of the room. Well, one thing I'll say about the queen, at least she gives you a fattened chance. Yes. Uh, most of our enemies just merely eat us or devour us. Like that one time Wilhelm was grabbed and his head was almost enveloped by a creature from another dimension. Mm. There was no puzzles. There was just death. Uh, yeah, she kind of likes to play games uh, she enjoys testing people hopefully we proved we're uh, up to the task of taking on these tests and beating her at our own game I'm glad we were able to solve this I do want to figure out where we are I didn't want to teleport us out of here before we you know have something to report other than that we stole a bunch of chess shall we see if there's a Pathway up to the surface. Let's go quickly. Yes. From this. By water elementals. The, the elementals swim back up the pipes. From the slu the sluice, there's a um, you round a couple turns, and there is a ladder leading up to a, a to a sewer grate cover, with a bit of ray of sunlight shining down from the surface.
Do you go, Rudy? Yeah. Yeah, okay. You open up the cover into a busy city street with crowds of people and the noises of the city all around you. The air here smells like seawater, that salt wafting on the air. Um, And just a hint of bread, wine, and sweat. You look up from uh, the architecture is unfamiliar, but elegant of the of the buildings around you. Um, the cobble the streets are cobblestone, and there are people milling through the streets. Any idea where we are? Excuse me, sir. I, 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 flag? Do we yeah, leave? Are we leaving the sewer? Can we just like go grab someone mm. and just ask them what time it is? What day is it? What city they're in? You grab someone on the street. Where am I? <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, 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 yes. Well, the, the, this this is the corner of, of, of Baker's Road and Spice. Where are you trying to get to, friend? Uh, the, 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 the man has a, has a, a, a strange accent about him and, and, um, and speak, but, but speaks fr- friendly enough. Are you drunk? Have you had too much to drink? No, sorry. We're, um, my friend here is, is new in town and he just likes asking people, uh, about the history of, of the place that we're in. Um, what can you tell us Which about it? Is... You don't know the history of the free city? Puh. I am un... I am not learned <sighs> in the history of many things. Did you just arrive here yesterday? I... Today, actually. stumbled across through a portal in through a royal chamber uh i think the the group of you had too much to drink you might want to head down to the docks and let 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 some off Ah, i'm done with you the man uh moves forward hope you don't throw up in the gutters uh thanks for your time sir are you Uh, familiar boys this might be a time to uh maybe message uh you know we should probably head back too. I I don't think we need to message them. Yeah, I think it's time to going? leave. Okay. You guys, you ready? Grab what? each of your shoulders. Let's go home. I yeah, I grab the two of them, and from my ring, I'm going to cast teleport and teleport back to Emberwood Village. As you as you lay the hands on um on on each other to to cast the spell. Um. A, a voice says, Don't be so hasty. Maybe we should talk about this first. As stepping out from around the corner comes a red jacketed woman in a wide red brimmed hat, alongside a familiar little man, Blackjack Mel. And that is where we'll end for the night. <laughs> Who's that? (laughs) (laughs) And that is where we'll end for the night. Who's that? (laughs) Wow. Uh, Great. That was so fun. It was a ton of fun. Oh my gosh, I was so stressed. We had a late break and a condensed break, so I figured we'd wrap it up a little bit early, But um, and that seems like the, the right point. Well, perfect. we have had a fun road for this first little uh, sprint in our season three. There's lots more big news to come, um, and a big thank you, of course, to Jill, Kelly, and Joe for playing. And Joe, a big con- congratulations. Can't uh, we'll be waiting with bated breath for the for the news? Yeah, yeah, so excited! Thank you so much. 
Yeah, very, very excited. Keep us all posted. And um, as always, a big thank you to Kyle for all of his amazing work behind the scenes. And a very big thank you to our dungeon master, Monty yes. Martin. Yeah, those puzzles. A puzzle. <laughs> Redemption. We we we're now what? One for two? <laughs> the, I mean, this group 18. here is one for one. This this trio. Yeah, yeah. Um, you, you washed your hands of the old of the old team. Yeah. Much better at solving puzzles, these two. Yeah. Uh, great work tonight. A lot of Amazing. fun. Amazing. Um, yeah, right. In our game tonight, we use a variety of incredible assets produced by talented artists, and uh, they have graciously given us permission to use them in our stream games, but you can use them at your tables too, and we encourage you to check out and support some of these amazing creators. Uh, some of the maps made with uh, on Roll20, um, some cartography by Josh O. Uh, we have some player character artwork uh, produced by Elizabeth Perot, um, and obviously music by tabletop audio but it sounds like you can also get some of these pdfs in the uh drakenheim book yes you can which is available if you head on to drakenheim.com you can get the pdf version of the drakenheim book uh we are still uh waiting on news about what's happening with the shipping of the physical book uh things have been holed up at the ports uh as as it were but the books are all printed the minis are all made all the manufacturing's done <laughs> Just, you know, with the way the world is these days, uh, the it, was, it, it kind of felt inevitable, but it, it's on its way. Can't wait. Nice. And of course, don't forget to look at the links below for our Teespring store where you can find all of your favorite Dungeon Dudes t-shirts, including, yes, 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 Troll Killer, uh, the Dungeon Dudes, as well as Shadows of Drakenheim, which does come in a poster and a sweater as well as a t-shirt. So check that out at bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. Our videos and live streams are made possible because we have some amazing patrons that help support our work. If you enjoy the work that we do here and want to get join our patron-only Discord community where you can hang out with all of us and chat, um, follow the links in the description below. Hit us up at patreon.com slash dungeon dudes. We also do our patron writers rooms and Q&As and homebrew workshops. We got a Q&A coming up this Thursday from our patrons on YouTube, so you can check that out too. That was everything that I was going to say next. Ah! <laughs> say something. Well, say you something. You took my line. Um, Kelly and I post new... No. Uh, yeah. Monty, <laughs> Monty and I post new videos every Thursday on our YouTube Ooh. channel where we cover everything Dungeons and Dragons, including advice for Dungeon Masters and guide for, for players. Uh, what do we have coming out this week? This week is... How to run the Tarrasque. How to run the Tarrasque. Yes. So, um, how to run the Tarrasque. Yeah. We're going to give some cool tips and tricks on role-playing Tarasks, as well as modifications to bring the Tarask to a lower-level party or a higher-level party. Uh, so get excited for that video coming out this week, and always stay tuned to our, ch to our channel for upcoming awesome videos that Monty and I make. Yeah, and of course we do have our live streams that are Tuesday nights as well. Um, the Drakenheim series, of course, will be uh, on pause uh, until May 24th from the state, for those of you watching live. Uh, but um, we will be res resuming then, and in the meantime, we will be doing some extra streams with, with guest stars. We might not be streaming every week during the break, but uh, stay tuned for news with our guests and when we will be uh, live again. And with that... I guess that concludes this chapter. Until next time. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you next time when we decide the fate of Drakenheim.